Hey guys, in this video, we are gonna be talking about the secret to an obedient dog. If that is something you need, then stick around. Well, welcome back. My name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And this is the Pet Parenting Reset where we talk about dog training, dog behavior, um, canine nutrition, canine and dog are the same thing, <laughs> nutrition, um, enrichment, nutrition and enrichment for your cats, all the wonderful things that you need to make sure your pet is living their happiest, healthiest life. And in today's video, we're talking about the secret to an obedient dog. So here we go. Okay, whether you're new here or if you've been following me for any length of time, you should know I am a positive reinforcement trainer. That means rewards-based training. Now, when we are teaching something to our dog, whether that's a behavior, a cue, anything in general that we want them to do, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a cue on demand, but a, any generalized behavior like impulse control, anything we're teaching our dog. When we first start out with something new, we want to reward generously. Now, one of the primary ways of rewarding is with food or treats. There are other rewards for your dog, right? There are other things that provide happiness to your dog that can be considered a reward, and every dog is different. So some dogs would prefer petting. Some dogs might prefer playing. There are a lot, and of course, praise is always good to give our dogs. It's free, might as well hand it out freely, right? Now, when we first start training something, we do. We want to reward, reward, reward. However, to truly let that cue or that behavior sink in for your dog, if you want to, increase if you want to get from beginner to intermediate to my dog is a freaking rock star we've got to make some changes we can't reward constantly the way we do when we first start out with a cue or a behavior now we start out rewarding very consistently because we're trying to teach our dog what that cue or behavior is that we want them to associate with the positive reinforcement they are receiving. So we want to lay that groundwork in your dog's mind that, oh, okay, it's this cue or this behavior. It's putting my butt on the floor or putting all four paws on the ground or touching my nose to their fingers or staying at the gate instead of walking through the gate. Whatever it is that you are teaching to your dog, they need a firm foundation in their brain that this is the cue or the behavior that my human wants from me and that's what elicits the reward. That said, over time, continuing to reward the same way we did when we started training the cue or behavior is not going to leave any room for improvement on your dog's part. Now, we want cues and rewards to become second nature to our dog, right? We don't want to have them thinking and mulling it over and responding possibly even slowly over time on down the road right we want our dog to pick it up quick 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 we want them we want it to be second nature to them so if we continue to reward 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 very very consistently over time your dog is not going to have any motivation to improve to respond quicker respond faster or even really learn anything new because they are consistently being rewarded for the same old thing so this is kind of a two-parter here because number one we certainly want to decrease the frequency at which we reward the same behavior we want them to know that this is a behavior that they need to consistently do even if they are only rewarded every second third fourth time right and again, we can use varying rewards. Food is the most popular because it is a very, very basic need. Uh, and your dogs are, most dogs are very, very food motivated, though you may have a dog that is not food motivated and you want to use something else like play. But rewarding less frequently over time is going to help your dog respond quicker, respond better, because they never know if they're going to get that treat this time or not and they want to improve. They want to continue to improve to see if that gets them the treat this time or not, right? So we want to help our dogs along 
with that improvement process. Additionally, we want to have varying degrees of reward for how well they are getting it, right? So if your dog does the same old thing at the same old rate, mm, they may not get a reward this time. But if they do it a little bit faster, oh, well, now not only do I have a treat, but I have a treat that's a little bit better than the last treat I gave you, right? So if we have, I always tell my clients, we need to know what our dogs like and we, want, we need to know to what degree our dogs like it. Um, I actually, this is, this is interesting and a little side story. For years, chicken hearts have been my dog's favorite treat. So I know that is top for her, right? She is up here when I give her a chicken heart. There are plenty of other things that she gets as treats and rewards that may not be quite as good as chicken hearts. She still likes them, but chicken hearts are up here. It's the top level for her, right? I recently ordered a new subscription box of dog treats and guys, oh my goodness, beef tongue was included. This is a dehydrated beef tongue and she, oh, she has told me in no uncertain terms that this is her new favorite treat. So now I have something even higher than a chicken heart. Now my chicken heart's here and beef tongue is up here above it. So your dog will tell you, you just have to listen. and. She also loves play, she also loves petting and affection. So these things are on this hierarchy of, of value for my dog. And a lot of times I can ask her to do something and reward with praise or petting because it's something we've worked on consistently for a very long time. So finding those different rewards will also help your dog to say, ooh, oh, I did that a little, did I do something different? I did it a little bit faster. I got a better treat this time, right? These things are going to help level up your training game. Also, and I said this was like kind of a two-parter, using games. We don't want to, we don't, training shouldn't be boring. We want to make sure we are utilizing games and having fun and our dog should be having fun because the more fun we have, the better we learn. So make sure you are also using games and incorporating that in your training with your dog. If you have any questions about that, I love, love games-based dog training. I have a course. I rarely ever mention it here, but I do have an online course. I highly recommend you check it out. It's linked in my link tree. So if you go to the description of the video and you get to my link tree, uh, you will be able to find my online course, or you can just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com. You can sign up there. It's only $27 a month. No, there's no contract. You can cancel at any time, but there, there are over a hundred videos in there. So start at the beginning, work your way through. You're gonna find some really incredible, incredible tips and tricks in there to help train your dog and train your dog using fun games. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. A couple of reminders. Number one, I hope you join me on Patreon. It is the first link in the description. You can also get there from my link tree, but Patreon is really cool because you get the content you sign up for. Uh, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. You get new content, exclusive content, um, behind the scenes content, and you help me to continue bringing content like this to you and other pet parents like you. Um, also, if you're not following the podcast, why not? Make sure wherever you get your podcast, you search the Pet Parenting Reset, give it a follow, start listening. There are some incredible solo episodes, but some even better interviews over there with some incredible pet professionals. I highly, highly suggest you start that very soon. Where it's Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts, it's there. If you haven't already, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, oh my goodness, what's going on? Like this is, this channel is full of great content. If you are a pet parent, you need to be subscribed. Yeah, so click that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. Uh, with that, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I hope this video found you well. Make sure to give your pet some extra love for me today. Until next time, bye guys. Mm -hmm.